when a <coughs> when a physical quantity it can be described by a single number we would call that a scalar quantity a scalar quantity things like time temperature density these are all examples of things which we may only use a single number to get all of the information for example if we had a certain amount of time let's say 10 seconds there is no additional piece of information that would help us understand 10 seconds any better in contrast vector quantities can be described with more than one number things like force velocity acceleration are all things which we can use more than one number to describe or rather more than one we can use more than one number to describe them <clears throat> for example 10 newtons of force is fine, that's our magnitude, that's how much force, but it doesn't really tell us the whole story. Instead, we want to know more about what is this force acting on and what is it doing, and to do that, to help us know those things, uh, we're going to say this is 10 newtons downward, let's say or 10 newtons rightward or 10 newtons up there and any number of different directions we could even say 10 newtons 20 degrees north of east if we were talking about a specific direction um, we call these things these are magnitudes 10 newtons would be the magnitude of force, it's how much. And downward, rightward, up, 20 degrees north of east, those are directions. So vectors consist of two parts, magnitude and direction, and scalar quantities. It's just one number that tells us the whole story. Okay, we're going to put this right up here so we can see it. calculations that simply contain scalar quantities for example 8 seconds plus 10 seconds doesn't require any special arithmetic or physics or math <laughs> this is normal addition this is what we do every day in elementary school, this is 8 plus 10 equals 18, of course, 18 seconds. 
This would be Scalar Edition. And it's not particularly exciting, but it's going to be foundational in our understanding of physics going forward. We are going to need these tools in our toolbox to succeed. Uh, we can also use scalar multiplication, for example, if we had 9 kilograms times 1 kilogram for some particular problem, we could simply just do 9 times 1 equals 9 kilograms. That's easy enough to figure out we can understand. We can understand that that is a normal thing to do. Scalar multiplication. So anytime in the future when I refer to scalar addition or scalar multiplication, all you really need to think about is this word and that a scalar represents or it means just one number. One number tells us the whole story. When we combine scalars, that's easy. Now we're going to get into combining vector quantities and we say, for example, that 10 newtons upward plus 20 newtons downward, that gets us into a bit of trouble, that becomes a bit more complicated. We can't simply add 10 plus 20 because what direction is it? Now, those of us more astute viewers may be able to tell me, uh, but let's talk about why, let's talk about the way we get there. To understand more about how vectors combine, um, we start with the simplest vector quantity that we can muster, that we can think about. It's called displacement. And displacement is simply a change in how far away something is from where it begins to where it ends. Displacement is a vector quantity because we care about two things. We care that Billy, for example, move 10 meters from here to there to the right. So 10 meters to the right, that tells us the full story. We know for a fact that walking 10 meters to the right and walking 10 meters to the left would not get you into the same place. That's how we know definitely that displacement is a vector quantity. In the future, going forward, we will represent vectors and vector quantities with single letters. For example, this displacement that Billy has just walked 10 meters to the right, we are going to represent with the capital letter A. And when we do that, we're going to make sure we know it's a vector by drawing a small arrow over the top of it, just like that. As opposed to just A by itself, which would represent the magnitude of this vector. So A with the arrow represents the whole story. A without the arrow represents just the magnitude, just part of the story. The only uh, part that's going to be useful in our calculations, but still we may only need the scalar in certain situations. 
So, A with the arrow represents the whole story, the whole walk, and A represents just the number 10. As I've done here, going forward, we will always draw vectors as arrows, okay? So, we understand that this arrow, this vector, is different from this arrow and this vector. They may both represent 10, but we need to know that those are different things. Those are different vectors. They represent different stories, different situations. The length of these lines is the same, is identical. I've drawn them close to the same length. That's because they both represent the same magnitude. They both represent 10. All right. If two vectors have the same direction exactly, I know that's not the most beautiful line in the whole world, but well, it, it'll have to do. Who cares in our world? Uh, these represent, these may represent two different vectors, they may represent two different situations, but, but, They are still parallel. They have the same direction. So when we talk about two vectors being parallel, we are saying that they may tell different stories, they may tell us different things, but they're pointing the same direction. They are in the same direction. Do not be confused. Only when these two vectors are not equal, these two vectors are not equal, these two vectors, however, would be equal. They point the same direction, or at least they should, the drawing is not perfect. They point the same direction, and they have the same magnitude. These two vectors would be equal. And that's the only situation where two vectors are equal. They must have the same magnitude and the same direction. I'm going to draw a little label up here that shows that 10 here represents the magnitude and the arrow represents the direction. Two vectors are equal if and only if they have the same magnitude and the same direction. Conversely, or as well, let's show vector A, which has some unknown magnitude, but we're going to say the magnitude is A, it has magnitude A, and another magnitude, another vector, that's magnitude B. Um, we're also going to make a note that says that A equals B. This is much of what our physics is going to look like. Even though A and B are represented by different letters, they are equal, and we're going to say that they're equal. These vectors are not equal. Their magnitudes may be equal, but these vectors are not equal because they are pointing in different directions, so they are not equal. We can say, however, that vector A, see here the magnitude of A equals the magnitude of B, but the vector A does not equal the vector B because they are pointing different directions. So while the magnitude of A may be the same as the magnitude of B, the vector A is not the same as the vector B because they're pointing in different directions right here in the picture. We could say, for example, 
that vector A is negative vector B, and those two things, that would be a true statement, that the direction of B, negative, doesn't necessarily have much to do with this. It just says that it's going the other direction, the opposite direction, the other way, than A, which is true. A is moving up and to the right, B is moving down and to the left. And they are going exactly opposite direction. So I'm going to say that the vector A is the same as the negative vector B. They tell me, those tell me exactly what the situation says in an equation. So to recap, scalar quantities are just magnitudes, they're just numbers, things like density, time, temperature. Vector quantities are like these, they have magnitudes and they have direction. Displacement represents a distance that something travels from where it starts to where it ends in a straight line. Scalar addition is just two numbers added together. Scalar multiplication, just two numbers multiplied together. We're still working on our definition of vector multiplication so we're going to get further into that, but we should have a good understanding of how vectors look on the page and how they act in space. Okay, and we're going to expound more on this in the later episodes. I hope that you have a perfect day and everything that happens to you is good and filled with goodness. And I want you to be as happy as you can even though, perhaps, you're taking a physics course, and that can be a very sad thing. But I hope this made things a little easier at this particular stage in the course.